Um, hello, I'm Jun Yang Lee from Crypto Lab, and I'm going to introduce prototyping a compiler for MOPI encryption in MLIR. This is a joint work with Wu Sang Song, who also have been working for Crypto Lab, but now is working for Google Korea. First of all, let me introduce what homomorphic encryption is. Homomorphic encryption is an encryption method that allows operations on ciphertext. Here, ciphertext means encrypted data. The, <clears throat> the term is has prefix homomorphic because um, the operations on ciphertext are described as um, with certain uh, another operations on plain text, which means another, which means unencrypted data. For example, doing multiplication on two plain text x and y, and encrypting the results should be equivalent to uh, encrypting the plain text x and y individually and doing some operation that is corresponding to the plain text multiplication. Um, basically, uh, in theory, full homomorphic encryption al allows any kind of operations, including addition, multi multiplication, and ReLU on encrypted data. So th this indeed uh, facilitates private AI, meaning doing artificial intelligence on encrypt uh, private data. By Gartner's reports, it is chosen among five impact for emerging technologies in 2022. And CryptoLab is also chosen as one of um, um, pr prospective vendors, seven prospective vendors. Let me dis describe why holography encryption is important. <clears throat> uh, in information theory, there are three states of data. The first one is uh, data at rest. In order to make it secure, we can use a secure storage such as uh, SSD with um, encryption and decryption hardware uh, implemented in hardware. The second state is in transit. In order to um, make the data in transit secure, um, the web, many web browser already has um, adopted the, implement, uh, the standard implementation of HTTPS and now they are using that. The third state is in use, and here homomorphic encryption is now uh, play has an important role. Um, in order, due to this importance, there have been many homomorphic lib encryption libraries that are, that are being developed, including CryptoLabs Heian, Microsoft Open Source Seal, and Your Technologies Palette Seed, and etc. Also, uh, many companies are developing a layer on top of homomorphic encryption libraries so that many people can easily use that uh, for, for example, using doing statistics or doing machine learning. But there is a challenge in using homomorphic encryption. Um, there are two things. The first one is space, and the second one is space, uh, speed. In order to show this, I will briefly introduce how homomorphic encryption works especially the CKKS scheme that is widely used to handle real, uh, real number data. Initially, the plain text, so, uh, or uh, actually there are two terms here. The first one is message and the second one is plain text. The message means the raw data. We'll assume that the raw data is an array of double here. After encodes, encoding, a plain text is created. <clears throat> a plain text, is a, an integer polynomial, meaning that it is a polynomial a0 plus dot 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 with large integer coefficients. After encryption, the plain text is now converted into ciphertext, which is a pair of integer polynomial. Here, the plain text cannot be distinguished by others because it is properly hidden in the pair of integer polynomial. And in order to identify the plain text from ciphertext, one needs to solve a very hard mathematical problem. Um, I just introduced this integer polynomial, and I'd like to introduce slightly more about this. First of all, the uh, each coefficient is an integer that is a uh, that is smaller than q, where q is a large integer. 
If we naively use this definition, we need to implement big integer, but using big integer is not effective. So instead of using big int, we describe the large integer Q as a multiplication of a series of uh, prime numbers. Here, the number of prime numbers L is described as the um, um, L minus one is also described as max level in this scheme as well. Then the co each coefficient can be represented again as an array of integer 64 bits. And the coefficient AI, which is supposed to be a big integer is represented as the remainders of the prime numbers. And this is uh, commonly called residual number system. Finally, to avoid infinitely um, increasing rank, rank, we use polynomial operations modulo x n plus one. And in mathematics, we also call this polynomial rig. <laughs> Therefore, the integer polynomial can be basically described as two dimensional array, uh, where first dimension is n, which is the rank of the, oh, sorry, I'm deg degree of the polynomial and L is the um, number of primes. Or equivalently, we can make transpose and uh, slightly different to represent that. So um, typically n is about two to 60 or two to 17 and L is about 30. So you can see that the size of this array is pretty big. If we do encoding, then the size of message is uh, about L times multiplied. And after doing encryption, since it becomes a pair, it, uh, it becomes about two times increased. Therefore, in total, we have about two times L um, times space more required. Now, let me briefly explain how encryption and decryption works. Um, let's assume that we are given a secret key, which can be which is used to um, in both encode and de sorry, encrypt and decrypt the data. The secret key is also another integer polynomial. Then encryption of plain text P with S is returns a pair where the first one, A, is a random fresh polynomial and the second one is minus a times s plus p plus e, where e is a fresh error polynomial. Here, the random polynomial with small coefficients are used. Then for decryption, uh, we simplify, um, subtract the second one from the first one times s, which uh, returns p plus e. From here, you can see that the original data is added with the adder. Um, this is the reason why the adder is added is that it, it is necessary to make the underlying mathematical problem hard. Therefore, uh, this scheme does not precisely preserve the original data. That is uh, re the reason why CKK scheme is sometimes called as approximative um, homomorphic encryption scheme. You can see that uh, we perform addition of two polynomials. And adding two polynomials is fast because um, you can simply um, element wisely add and do modulo operations. Here, modulo operation of the integer 64 is pretty expensive, but we have optimized algorithms for this. For example, well known Barrett reduction. But Doing multiplication of two polynomials is slow in general. The reason is that the knife product requires n squared time complexity. In order to resolve this, mathematicians suggested number theoretic transformation, which is analogous to the fast Fourier transformation in prime number world. If we use this, the time complexity can be reduced from n squared into n log n. However, you can still see that it is still um, more expensive than the multiplication on the message word, which will simply require the ON of multiplication of double pairs. <laughs> so 
So using these polynomial operations, we can describe many kinds of operations on ciphertext in homomorphic encryption. First of all, addition is simply adding pairwisely two ciphertext, which contains each of which contains two integer polynomials. Multiplication is slightly more complicated because uh, it will generate, it, generate S square, where S is a secret key. In order to remove the S square term, we need to pre-evaluate the key that is called evaluation key, which basically encrypts the value of F S square. Also, the uh, scale factor is multiplied by encode, encoding because it basically uh, converts double into truncated integer. In order to reduce the data that is lost when doing floating pointer to integer truncation, a scale factor is multiplied. But this causes multiplication to uh, exponentially accumulate the scale. In order to reduce this issue, an additional operation that is called rescale operation is done after the multiplication, making the multiplication even more expensive. Another key operation in homomorphic encryption is rotation, which indeed uh, rotates the elements of the ciphertext. In order to perform rotation, we also need rotation keys that are pre-calculated. From this, you can see that there are memory uh, consumptions uh, that happens additionally to the input ciphertext, and maintaining this is pretty costly. The final important operation is bootstrapping, which is known to be very slow. After about L times multiplication, ciphertext cannot be used anymore. In order to um, revive ciphertext, this uh, separate text that became obsolete, we have to perform bootstrapping. The bootstrapping is very expensive, but it allows infinite number of multiplications in principle. So to summarize, um, homomorphic encryption has cost in space because the message size is multiplied by the number of primes. And if a message is not packed, then the factor becomes worse. And so multiplication and rotation and many operations requires pre-calculated keys that are supposed to be large. The second reason, um, second, homomorphic encryption is uh, slow because it performs a lot of 64-bit and sometimes 124-bit integer operations. And the time complexity may be larger than ON, and even if it is so n, it may have large constant factors such as L and performing operations on multiple polynomials. What is worse, uh, it is desirable for homomorphic encryption to run on diverse environments. <laughs> running homomorphic encryption library on premise rather than running it on the cloud is beneficial because often, uh, doing operation on ciphertext and plain text is faster than doing operations on two ciphertexts. If you run homomorphic encryption library on premise, then we don't need to uh, encrypt whole data because the private data we are maintaining does not need to be encrypted. Secondly, encryption and decryption must be done on the device because we cannot export the private data into another machine and encrypt that on that. Second, utilizing both GPUs and CPUs brings, brings major benefits. GPUs are fast, but it is less cost effective than deep learning because we do not use floating point operations here. Also, high-end server CPUs have many cores and they are good at integer benchmarks. And ciphertexts are large, so sending them to GPU is intensive. And finally, pre-calculated keys are uh, large. It easily exceeds several gigabytes, so it may not fit in GPU memory. But the problem is that homomorphic encryption library developers are um, usually busy. They have many problems to attack other than to optimize the implementation for various environments. For example, they have to deal with packing the metrics in multiple ciphertexts, which may, may have multiple solutions depending on benchmarks. Also, they have to uh, properly approximates 
higher high level functions such as log x by and find a way to properly reduce the uh, arithmetic error. Also, they need to properly implement these operations using small number of bootstrap operations, which are known to be expensive. So <clears throat> the challenge that we are trying to attack here is to help them by using compiler optimization techniques to uh, make the already implemented um, or yeah, the known homopic encryption operations more efficiently run on various environments. So we started developing a new project that is a, a new compiler that is called Heian.mlir. Here, Heian is the name of homopic encryption library of CryptoLab, and we are re-implementing it using MLIR. Heian MLIR takes a polynomial program, uh, which writ is written using the polylang. We developed the polylang and it describes polynomial operations, um, polynomial operations. The target language will be a combination of CPU architecture and GPU architecture. Um, <clears throat> the CPU architecture can be anything and the, also the GPU architecture can be the thing that MLIR provides. Currently it is in an actively developing stage and it is being prototyped. Currently it can compile encoded encryption and decryption written in poly and also provide OpenMP offloading and also performance CUDA uh, in for simple polynomial programs. This is an example that um, is written using the new poly language. First of all, in the line one, you can see that the whole encryption parameter is um, defined. It is defined as an attribute in the module. The line two defines the signature of encryption, which takes one plain text and one secret key. You can see the new type poly entity, which it, with um, the first argument 30, meaning that it is a polynomial having 30 moduli and entity conversion is applied. And, and then you can see that also there is poly type, which does not, which is almost equivalent to the poly that poly under by entity, but entity is not applied. Like this, you can uh, describe what the implementation detail of the homopic encryption operations in polynomial operations. And then the heian.mli can compile this into the efficient machine code. Well, this code, this example is showing how encryption is implemented. And you really want to know how encoding is implemented as well. And it is pretty straightforward. You can see that um, we are in, we can describe the message in tensor, which consists of the which is an array of complex numbers. Then using the from message instruction, we can convert into the polynomial type. <laughs> the important pass that we implemented is poly to tensor. It lowers poly type and poly entity type into the built in tensor type in MLIR. The poly operations are lowered into lineage and tensor operations. And also constant tensors that are necessary for efficient calculations are inserted. There are some operations that cannot be expressed in lineage because they have reduction patterns that cannot be easy, easily represented in lineage.generic. So in this case, we uh, the conversion simply inserts um, a dummy function call. For example, for entity, it is external forward entity. And it is the pass at the later phase that finally lowers into the lower level control flow such as SCF. This is the brief pipeline of the Heian MLIR for CPU code generation. The poly is first converted into tensor plus lineage and bufferization is done. And then it is converted into uh, memref plus affine loops, affine loops. In this space, many optimizations are done such as loop fusion, um, optimizing heap allocation for sampling. Um, if 
table of location is only used for sampling, then we can omit it and use random sampling on the fly. Also, we can mark loops as parallelizable, which will be used for OpenMP offloading. And also we perform super vectorization here. And then it is finally lowered into lower level dialects such as SCF. And then OpenMP is offloaded and it is finally lowered into MLIR with bare pointer conversion. We found that loop fusion is the optimization that collects many low hanging fruits in terms of performance. It has three benefits. The first one is that it reduces the size of working sets by the number of primes, which is L in many cases. On the bottom, you can see that there are two functions. The first one is operations on A, A and the second loop, double loops is oper doing operation on B. There is a synchronization barrier between these two because the, the two loops are supposed to be offloaded into OpenMP. After they are merged, they are fused, the intermediate, loop, intermediate data B is removed and um, you can see that the inner loop is now purely done on the consecutive uh, accesses of C and A, so the working set is smaller than before. Also, you can see that since B is small, B is removed, um, the redundant memory access is now removed. Also, the synchronization be points between the two loops are removed as well. In MLIR, we implemented various algorithms um, such as forward, backward, NTT, and FFT. And we also implemented barrier reduction, which is an efficient uh, algorithm for performing modulus operation. We also implemented random samplings in MLIR and also many loops that are specifically necessary for encoding and decoding. Um, one hardship when we are developing these algorithms in MLIR was that it was tricky to, de to debug the generated code. To facilitate debugging, we de um, come up with a new debug dialect and used it. For example, we could insert assertions between the generated MLIR code to check whether some invariants hold. Also, we added on sanitizer modes, which uh, inserts bound checking assertions for uh, every memory accessing operations. This could detect out of bounds access errors, uh, which were supposed to be very hard uh, when we were doing debugging by hand. We, for the experimental results, we used Heian, which is the uh, mentioned CryptoLab's proprietary homophy encryption library uh, as a competitor. It internally uses Intel Hexel, which is an optimized library for doing various homophic encryption operations such as entity, conversion, and addition and multiplication. We use three processors, and for the number of threads, we used one VS4 cores. For the last one, we used one VS10, VS80. The results is the result looks like looks like this. Um, we ran encode and encrypt. And for the single core benchmarks, uh, the performance benefit was not clear. And especially for the gold CPU, it has AVX 5512. So Intel Hexel was very fast. But when we, we are running things on multi -core, core, parallelization of Heram MLIR was very successful. And we got consistently 40% speed ups. Also, the result was similar for other benchmarks, which are encode and encrypt for symmetry key and also decrypt. For decrypt, we got consistent benefits. And you can see that the result is always, Heian MLIR is always faster than Heian. This is the end of the presentation. And for the future works, we'd like to introduce more uh, uh, make the entity implementation faster and sometimes invoke Intel Hexel if beneficial. Also, we'd like to fully enable GPU offloading and support more home encryption, especially rotation. And also we'd like to show whether the compilation is indeed correct. And I have some idea about this. Yes, thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. It was 
very refreshing to see a lot of math equations and um, um, yeah I'm I'm like very impressed that we can use compiler technologies to like enable such a complicated um, thing um, I cannot claim that I understood everything but I I got fair amount of idea that um, got me excited already um, I had a question so you said that loop fusion um, uh, like was one of the um, like that benefited you the most did you um, is this loop fusion optimization from the LLVM uh, optimization pipeline or is it a poly like thing which, which one did you use uh, um, I used the uh, affine loop fusion in MLIR but we had to somehow modify that because uh, the loop fusion algorithm was not aware of random sampling because um, random sampling is simply an unknown function call. It could not understand that and it stopped loop fusion. So we had to somehow modify that and uh, keep doing loop fusion even if random sampling happens inside loops. So it is the MLIRS one. Okay, so this this op is one of these op is random sampling. Is that what you're saying? Oh, yes. Sometimes the random sampling is done and added into um, yes, it is, okay. for example, addition of random sampling and AIJ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. And it doesn't have side effect, right? Like random sampling does not. So you might want to, I think there is an attribute pure or something like that uh, on the function. Mm. If you add, then it might realize. I'm not sure if you can try. Uh, yes, actually, that was exactly what we did. We added a parallelizable attributes and yeah. added into random sampling functions and let um, functions in MLIR recognize that attribute. Oh, okay. Yeah, pure should have done that as well. Const or pure. There is attribute const and attribute pure. Uh, so either way, I think you got it. So it's fine. Um, okay. Um, you might want to try poly because there's an, there are a few more optimizations. I think, um, mm -hmm. what is that one? Um, like as you mentioned that you want to offload to GPU and there might be a way to, um, like outer loop can be parallelized. Uh, I think uh, LLVM has that transformation. Oh, okay. I can look into poly as well. Yeah. Johannes is here, like Johannes, uh, not sure if he's still here, but he's like expert in those things, so you might want to talk to him as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay, if there is no question, I'll ask one more. Um, you mentioned that like this uh, homomorphic encryption is like one of the leading like next generation technologies. Uh, can you give like an are there like real world application already like where it is used getting used at currently mm. <clears throat> um there are a few products that are made by um homomorphic encryption companies for example duality um uh is selling a database product that uses homomorphic encryptions to process queries and it can concern some private issues that cannot be easily dealt when just using uh, database with plain text. Okay. Um, okay. So follow up question is like, once you use the a compiler optimization, right? Does it reduce the amount of randomness or like um, like does it reduce the amount of crypto like secrecy in some way? Mm. No. Introducing secrecy. Like, well, let's say, like, I'm like, so I'm trying to bring some analogy. Maybe it's a stupid question, but like, sometimes what happens is like when you do compiler optimization, right? Like, it deletes a bunch of code or like dead code elimination or um, based on like what you did in the implementation, let's say, put some attribute. So it may reduce the randomness of that sampling. Because let's say you're thinking that two random sampling can be fused. 
but two random mm -hmm. is not equal to one random right like you might have extra randomness before um uh, so are, are you get is does this affect the the amount of guarantees that you had before compared to after the transformation ah uh, oh i think the randomness should be preserved for security um okay. well maybe the traditional optimizations in LLPM wouldn't remove the randomness because they will just regard the random functions as unknown functions. Okay. Um, yeah, in, I guess sim it will be similar in MLIR as well. Maybe it will be our parts that should be uh, careful about not mm -hmm. removing the randomness from the input program. Yes, preserving randomness is very important in security. Yeah, okay, something awesome. Very interesting presentation.